Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today, whew, I'm going to be talking about the 10 eyeshadow palettes I would keep. If I could only keep 10, if I was to lose my entire collection today and only have 10 palettes left over, what 10 would I pick? Now, I'm not, I have to admit, this is embarrassing. It took me way too long to do this. It took me way too long to go through all my palettes and pick 10. But I have 10 palettes here, and honestly, I think this is a well-rounded collection. I think I would be happy, like legitimately happy, if I were left with only these 10 palettes. Let's go ahead and start with the newest palettes to my collection. So the newest one that I would want to keep uh, is this Pat McGrath. I, oh, you can just see everything up there, can't you? This is the Divine Rose 2 palette. This is gorgeous. I like. I was actually very upset after I tried this palette because I had bought that limited edition like Christmas palette, thinking it would be like dipping my toe into the Pat McGrath formula. It is so different. It is leagues different. These shades are stunning. They're beautiful. Like every time I dip a finger in or make an eye, it's an experience. It's not just I'm sitting down to do my makeup. It's like legitimately an experience. And I'm a convert. I love these shadows. I, I hate the price tag, but I love these shadows. So this would definitely be one of the palettes I would need to keep. Uh, since we started off with the higher end products, let's do the last two luxury products that I would keep. These are two palettes from Natasha Denona. These are my two favorite Natasha Denona palettes. I actually did a video where I ranked all of my Natasha palettes. I'll throw it up in the cards if you missed it. But the first one is the Circle Loco. I, I love this palette. It is so unique. It is so beautiful. I have so much fun every single time. I use this palette so of course i would have to keep it my other favorite natasha palette is the metropolis palette this is just stunning this is literally me in like a palette it's grungy it's beautiful it's it's everything that i would have like ever want to live my grungy dream is in this palette so of course i this one's gotta stay Next, I picked an ABH palette, and I actually, I really only wanted to pick one ABH palette, and it's actually pretty difficult to pick one, but I picked this one. This is the Riviera palette. I love this. You know back when ABH was good, remember? Yeah? Good times. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's their original formula. They're stunning. I love the colors chosen here. This is actually like a majority color palette. We really only have, like, one true brown shade the rest are like some peaches you've got a white you've got this beautiful mustard that i'm actually wearing today i'm wearing a combination of this palette and the next palette on my eyes today i did use some of the yellow shimmer here on my lid and this mustard shade it's just beautiful I love this palette so much, and I love the original ABH formula. It makes me also very nostalgic for back when, like, this came out. Because I remember when this palette came out, and I think it was their first really colorful palette, and I just, like, lost my shit because I loved the packaging. This is stunning. This is beautiful. This is summer. Summer right here. And then you open it up, and you have these shades, and it's the original formula, and it's good. Get out of here. Get out of here. I had to keep, out of all my ABH palettes, even like subculture, I was thinking of bringing in subculture as like a whatever, whatever kind of, because I have it back here. I have it totally panned. But I, I had to go with this one. The next palette I'm actually wearing on my eyes as well, this is the ColourPop Good Sport palette. You can pry this palette from my cold dead fingers. I freaking love this palette. Like, this palette is, like, the best thing I think ColourPop has ever done besides the Yes Please palette. This palette is stunning. And, like, the people still talk about this palette to this day. And this was a limited edition release back when? 2017, 2018? Oh, my God. I love this palette. I am wearing a combination of the yellow shade right here, the shimmer yellow shade right here, and then a little bit of this top shimmer shade in the inner corner mixed with another uh, shimmer shade. But I love this palette. This is fall. This is grungy. This is beautiful. And it's affordable. I love this palette. I'm, I'm just so upset that this was limited edition because like there's so many people who want this palette who can't get it and it's it's an amazing palette and I wish everyone could get their hands on it but ColourPop being freaking ColourPop now you can't get your hands on anything that they release so yeah this is again a nostalgic piece for back when ColourPop was good Are we, we've got a theme here ColourPop ABH Another brand that seems to be like mm, a little iffy, but I love this palette. I actually did a whole video comparing this palette to another peach palette. I'll throw that up in the cards, but this is the Kylie Peach Extended Palette. Um, ba, 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 ba. And here it is. This is a beautiful peach palette. And this is a peach palette with orange undertones, which is how I like my peaches. You can have a peach with a pink undertone or with a yellow undertone or with a yellow orange undertone. And I like the orange undertone. It just looks beautiful. And I love, I love this palette. It's, it is honestly every peach shade you would ever need or want. 
is in this palette. Um, if you really want to see this in action, I did several looks and comparisons in that video, so make sure you check it out. I'll have it up in the cards. Next, we have the biggest palette here, but this is the big palette that I actually keep reaching back for, and I think it is just such an amazing palette, and I feel like it doesn't get as much hype anymore, which is really sad. This is the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. I love this palette so much. It is big. It is bulky, but look at these shades. You've got You've got neutrals, you've got colors, you've got some beautiful shimmers, and I have to say, I love their baked shadow formula. Their baked shadow formula in here is amazing. The only downside to this palette is that this middle shade is supposed to be a face highlight. It's not a great face highlight. Just stick to using that for your inner corner for any eye looks that you create with this palette and you'll be good. It just, it just doesn't blend out well like on my cheek, which, you know, it's not even the main point of this palette. The main point of the palette is supposed to be the eyeshadows, and the eyeshadows are stunning. I love this. I've got the other two Zodiac, the big Zodiac palettes. There's a Love Sign palette, and then there's a Crystal Zodiac palette, but this is still my favorite. It's the OG. It's such a great palette, and I really recommend this. Even if you might be a little bit weary of how big it is, honestly, the shades are beautiful. They're stunning. And so, of course, I had to keep this. There's no way I could get rid of this palette. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We have three palettes left and the next one I was actually surprised because I really don't like smaller palettes But I saw this one and I was like I have to pick this one I can't leave this one out and it's a quad and this is a quad from Midas Cosmetics This is the pumpkin spice latte quad and it is Pumpkin spicy look how beautiful these shades are. I did a spotlight on petite palettes of this a while ago But I'll throw it up in the cards. These are these are so pigmented. They're pigmented, they're beautiful, and it's a pumpkin spice palette that actually has like orange. I love orange shades, I love peachy shades, but it seems like whenever there were other pumpkin spice releases, I'm looking at you, Too Faced, they were just kind of neutral. Like if you're gonna give me pumpkin, give me pumpkin. And this gave me pumpkin, this gave me, this gave me fall, this gave me pumpkin patch, this gave me cornfields, this gave me everything that I ever wanted and more. And it surprised me again, because I don't reach for smaller palettes, but this one, I do. I love this one. Next, we have a palette that, while maybe not the most exciting, is the most, like, utilitarian, bulletproof, amazing. And that's the original The Rock Pro palette. I remember back when I first started watching YouTube and people were like, this is the best palette ever, this is everything that you need all in one palette, blah blah blah, and they sold me on it. But a part of me was skeptical. I'm like, eh, is it really that great? Like, do you really use it that much? Yes. <laughs> this was the one palette I brought with me every single time I traveled because it is thin, it is sturdy, it is beautiful, and it's got everything you might need. So I love the way that it is laid out with the mattes on top and the shimmers on the bottom. I, whenever, I'm actually going to go to a wedding this upcoming fall and I'm probably going to bring this with me because you can get such a nice like neutral glam look with this palette and it's, it's not even like hard. Like honestly, I feel like now because I feel like now it's a bit underrated, the actual formula of the Lorac shadows, because these are buttery, they're pigmented, they're beautiful. And I feel like you don't hear many people talking about Lorac anymore. I feel like they were really great with the Lorac 1, 2, and 3, and then the Lorac 4 was just kind of like meh, and then they kind of like fell off. I never really saw people talking about or going back to Lorac after that release. But this is still, it holds up so well, which shocks me, but it's just so good. Like, this is, to me, this is like the naked, what the Naked palette was. This was your go-to. It had everything you needed, and it's fantastic, and it still holds up. All right, and my last palette. If you've been around with my channel for a bit, you'll probably, I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to guess this one, but this is one I've hit pan in several times without even trying, because I love going back to this palette so much, and it's the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. I hate to say it, but the hype on this was well-deserved well-deserved hyping because this is a beautiful palette. I actually very nearly added this as my Panda palette. It only barely like edged out the Natasha palette for this year, to be quite honest, because I saw a channel that I love panned this palette a while ago. It was actually Thrifty Beauty, and watching her pan this palette gave me so much inspiration. And actually one of her tutorials for this palette is like my favorite eye look of all time. And that's actually why I have pan in the shade Luscious down here, because it's a beautiful shade. But this is fantastic. This is versatile. This is beautiful. It also holds up and I, I can't get rid of it. I, I need to have this. <laughs> and there we have it. Those are the 10 palettes that I would keep if I could only keep 10 palettes in my whole collection. I think I did a good job. I got a good mix. We got some luxury. We got some middle end. We got some high end. We got some drugstore products in here. And honestly, I would be happy with this as my eyeshadow palette collection. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know down below if you could only keep 10 palettes or if you could only own 10 palettes what palettes would they be? And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.